live from Midtown Manhattan, the Cube's live coverage of Big Data NYC, a Silicon Angle Wikibon production, made possible by Hortonworks. We do Hadoop and Wham Disco. Hadoop made invincible. And now your co-hosts, John Furrier and Dave Vellante. Okay, we're back here live in New York City for Big Data NYC. This is where all the action's happening. This is theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the events, extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, joined Dave Vellante. We're covering Big Data in New York City, which is Hadoop World, Strata Conference. We've got all the action, all the news, and I uh, want to thank Hortonworks and Wynn Disco for supporting us. Mm -hmm. Thanks so much. And our guest is the president of Hortonworks, Herb Kinnins. Thank you for coming on theCUBE. Appreciate it. I had Sean earlier on. Uh, from Hortonworks. I want to say thank you guys for supporting uh, the Cube, the community. Uh, certainly very happy. We had some tweets saying, you know, mm -hmm. for the record, the Cube has been amazing. And but thank you for so much for that. Absolutely happy to support. We think you guys do phenomenal work for the community. So we think it's fantastic support, and we're happy to go do that. Th so appreciate you, appreciate the opportunity to be here as well. So Dave and I were talking with Sean, and and uh, we love talking business models and tech and, mm -hmm. and, and 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 go anywhere. But you got, you're running the business over there. You have the clear view of the landscape, and you see all the piece on the chessboard. Obviously, mm -hmm. Sean a little more strategy, he's got the moves down, but you got to grow the business, you got to fundamentally mm -hmm. build the business. And the classic case is, what's the business model? Mm -hmm. I love yep. that question, what's your business model, everyone mm -hmm. asks. So let's just get on the record, Dave and I want to have a quick discussion about the Hortonworks business model. Mm -hmm. And what is your business model? Obviously it hasn't, <laughs> I don't think it hasn't changed, but let's explain yep. to folks. And this is where, uh, as much as right, strategy is important, how you build the business, what you do, at the end of the day, it's proven in top line, <laughs> in terms of how you're growing the business and how you can go scale it. So from a business model perspective, our model hasn't changed one bit from day one of the company, which is there's really three core things we're going to focus on, which is we believe that Hadoop is helping to replatform the modern data architecture. And if we do this right, we believe you can go build a business 100% in open source and go drive that business because an open community should be able to out-innovate any individual company at any point in time if you can gather the resources of the community. So we based it on open community, open source, open source development and business model, based it on working very closely with the partners and building an ecosystem. So you walk into any Fortune 1000 company and they have legacy assets and they want to know, can I fit this new architecture and slot it very easily with all my legacy assets? And you want to make sure that works and we'll help install the partnerships. And third, make sure Hadoop's viable and consumable by the enterprise, has all the enterprise class features. So if you look at that from a business model, say if we're going to approach it that way, the right model is that at the end of the day what we provide is we provide all our software for free and open source, we put it all out there, and we provide a support business. We support our customers as they go through the adoption cycle and what they do. And that support business is very similar to you would think of any other software company that has a maintenance stream and how they support their business and what they do. So the marginal economics of that business is identical to any software business, is that right? Absolutely. Uh, no, of course, the, the, the training piece is not. Training mm -hmm. scales with people. Right? Training there's and dis consulting. Right. It, it, there's diseconomies of scale. So in your, in your model mix, uh, Sean was saying, you know, your ideal mix is 80-20, uh, is, is 80%, mm -hmm. 80 you know, subscription, 20%. Yep. Yeah, Ideally, 80-20 between support services to training and consulting is where we'd want to be. I'd say today we're probably closer to the 70-30 range, mm -hmm. right? but trending right to where we want to be. And the, you know, the reason for that is for companies to get successful adoption of a dupe, they need some help. There's a shortage of skills out there and they want some help, so we help them through that curve and make sure that they can get successful. Okay, so the profitability model, as we just determined, like any software business with a 70-30 mix mm -hmm. of, of software to services, um, but, but you're, the argument could be that, okay, what well, you're giving up the upfront portion, the upfront mm -hmm. license portion, chopping that off, so you're shrinking your market size. How, how do you respond to that? Yeah. So a couple ways. So if, if you think about it, it's how do you want to grow the business? If you want to make a market function, what you need to do is make Hadoop a prevalent platform that can be used across all companies and across all partners and standardize on a standard distribution. You could argue markets in the past, even in the open source world, they can either fracture up front, which means different companies try to take on components of that, fracture the market, and keep their market share, or if you want the market to function and really all companies to be able to profit from this and be able to get advantage from this, you want Hadoop to be an enterprise class platform that can scale horizontally, which means 
you get everyone to start using this as the standard and you can go scale the business and you allow all of your partners to make money on top and to grow their business on top on it, I think there's incredible volume of how Hadoop can become so, so, that standard. So you platform. actually can make it up in volume. I often joke, you know, hey, we'll make it up in volume. We'll cut the price, we'll make it up in volume. You can't do that in the hardware business. You can actually do it in your business model. Absolutely. Right. So think about you know, successful companies who've done that on the software side and open source, like a Red Hat, right? You absolutely can build that type of model and make it successful and so, profitable. So, so what's your, you guys aren't afraid to talk about lock-in because we're all open source. Eh? Mm -hmm. Bring on the discussion about lock-in. There's nobody less locked in than guys like you mm -hmm. and Red Hat. But, but to make money, you've got to have some kind of lock-in. Even Google search, the lock-in is that they've got great search. Um, you know, a, a VMware has a much stronger lock-in you know, or you know, an Oracle, of course, mm -hmm. is the has the mother of all lock-in. So, what's your lock-in? So, I wouldn't really say there's lock-in because the way we look at it and say we do a one-year subscription for support services that we provide to a customer, and at the end of the year, they're free to say, "I would no longer like to so do that." So, your lock-in is just doing a good job, exactly. earning the right to get a renewal. That's your lock-in. You are exactly so right. So, it's similar to Google's lock-in. Yeah. And right. what does that do? It actually balances the power between customer and supplier to say you have to continue to deliver, to continue to earn the right to do business but it's with these are, these are interesting discussions to me because you've, you've got a monetization model, Google's got a monetization model, Java didn't really mm -hmm. have a monet, didn't have a monetization model, right? Um, and, and again, Google's is great search and they monetize it with you know, advertising. Mm -hmm. Android, there's Android's another interesting one. Mm -hmm. So open source to, to us is just so disruptive and, and unpredictable. Uh, but one thing that you know is that it drives innovation. It drives innovation. The other thing I would say is the market conditions are different now than they were even five years ago to allow a pure open source Describe company to prosper. Yeah. I mean, if you think about it, think about the maturity of open source in the market and how it's used today. I mean, it's, companies are comfortable using yeah. it and betting their business on where they may not have been 10 years ago. And they understand right? how to deal with that from a legal standpoint. And, yep. yeah. The legal requirements have been you know, pushed through. The idea of a subscription model is not foreign to companies anymore, and they like that model because of what it does of CapEx versus OpEx and where they can start using their budgets. That's actually helped now to drive and foster a market where you can build a successful open source company very well. And I'm not sure you could have a decade ago. It, would, it was a different market condition. Well, I mean, but, but you know, Red Hat was built over a decade Absolutely. ago. Absolutely. All right, so, but that, mm -hmm. was a, that was sort of the exception mm -hmm. that proves the... The, well, well, the, the market was mini computers at the time in OSs, like right. Spark, you know, and so on and so forth. But the uh, question I want to ask on the scale side, so on the scale side, it's pretty simple. You can just have people, costs, mm -hmm. and bookings. Mm -hmm. And is there anything else that you look at on the scale equation for you guys uh, in, in, your, in your business as you, as you throttle up? Well, it's, uh, it's people, costs, and bookings, but the other thing is, you know, is the key partnerships and making sure those partners are enabled to go drive Hadoop as part of their platform they take to market. So whether you're Microsoft or Teradata or SAP or HP, which we just announced, or any of those, right? All of those companies have their platform that they can go drive Hadoop through the market with their platform. And those are all companies we work very let, closely with and that helps drive yeah, scale. Well, let's drill down on this, double click on that because um, the big conversation has been enterprise ready. Is there enterprise ready? And everyone's like, yeah, it is. It's, 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 enterprises are using it. Mm -hmm. So whether it's Cloudera, Hortonworks, but you guys have a lot of success in there. We've heard from both companies. Uh, some successes have some good scale uh, and customers in the enterprise. Uh, the question for you is, talk about the partnerships that you've announced here that you're uh, with the, on top of the, the, the data platform and what are the key drivers around these new guys coming, because SAP is big, they have HANA, mm -hmm. right, we're gonna hear from them earlier, that's also in memory, it's mm -hmm. got a little big data, that's not open source, <laughs> but you know, supports Hadoop, so how is this all fitting in? So pure play Hadoop is by standalones, great, now you got existing environments mm -hmm. like SAP mm -hmm. and your partnerships, how does that work? How do you see the ecosystem evolving? So, I was taught this analogy very early on, fish where the fish are, <laughs> so <laughs> if you wanna think about it that way, if if some of these large partners have great relationships with their customers and companies have bet their architecture on them, work with them, much easier to say, how do you fit within that world and make Hadoop consumable through that lens for that company in the way that they want to consume it? So it's, let's make Hadoop consumable the way they want to consume it through the partners they want to. And if they want to do it independently through us directly, fantastic. If they want to do this through SAP or through Teradata or through HP or through Microsoft, Fantastic, we support them all, and not only support them, make sure that Hadoop makes their platform stronger. 
and allows it to be yeah, worked. Your business model is agnostic on the delivery, indirect or direct, right? You don't Completely really, agnostic. you still got a subscription. It's to a customer, whether it's sell mm -hmm. thrown through SAP, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter to you guys, it's still revenue, right? So it's, 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 the same it's where the customer has the trust. If they have trust with a, a, a certain company, you don't care. Absolutely not. And just to you know, give you a point, I just walked out of here in a meeting with the CIO just downtown. As we went through that, we're in the meeting for an hour going through this first time meeting with them. I walk out, who's walking in right behind us? Our partner Microsoft is walking right in behind them. They have a similar conversation. So it's clear that those relationships do matter, and they, each of these companies have trusted relationships in the environment. Talk about the HP deal a little bit more. Um, so it, we, Vertica is like this hidden gem inside of HP, and they're doing a lot of good business. We did the Vertica user conference. It was very impressive in mm -hmm. terms of what's, what's going on. And like I say HP's so big, it kind of gets lost. It's like the government sometimes. But, but so what's going on with, with, with HP? I would have expected they had, would have announced a partnership with you guys a, a long time ago, but mm -hmm. it, it took a while. But uh, what, what, what was announced, and what's your relationship with them? So I think it's um, here. So what was announced is HP is a partner of ours. We work closely on how we're going to make Hadoop work with their platform, and also they can be a resource and distributor of Hortonworks. Right. So that, that part is in place. HP has right, fantastic relationships with their customers and, their, and contractual and buying vehicles. Right? We're trusted relationships where they want to work with their customers. In terms of the opportunity of where it can go, is you look at where HP fits within that environment you know, and how companies look and say, what else can I do with HP on the technology side? What else can I do with it on the Vertica side? And again, how do I make all this work together seamlessly in my environment? Yeah, so obviously it's not just Vertica. I mean, mm -hmm. mentioned Vertica, but HP's got you know, autonomy. They've got all kinds of different Absolutely. assets there. So, okay, and so there's, there's, it's obviously a channel for you guys. It's great. Mm -hmm. You guys are building up your channel. You do, you're using the playbook that you guys know <laughs> so well. But is there co-development also going on with HP? So absolutely, with HP we're also looking at areas on co-development in terms of what we're going to do. Not all of those are set or announced yet, but that is a big part of it. And that's a great point because all of our partners, I think the co-development is what makes the difference between I mean, just having a partner and having a logo on a website and saying are we actually improving the platform for the overall good of the community as well as the platform to help their products work better with Hadoop. And it's both, and that does require co-development. And that open source model is the right way to make sure all of that flows back into the same horizontal platform that everyone uses. Okay, so talk about the, uh, the data platform you guys announced, pre-announced mm -hmm. prior to the show. Mm -hmm. um, what's the traction like? What's been the feedback? You've been on the customer visits. You mentioned CIO. What, what's been the, some of the conversations uh, and traction you've had with that? So the announcement was around Hadoop 2.0, mm -hmm. right? And we were mm -hmm. super excited about Hadoop 2.0 because this has been a vision for four years from many of our key founders, which is Hadoop has been phenomenal as a batch analytics platform in terms of what it can do. But what we find is for Hadoop to take its rightful role in the data architecture and effectively become a data operating system, become a data platform that companies can use, they want to say, how do I have the data in one place, form a data lake or put all my data and land it in the same place, but how do I interact with it in multiple ways? And before 2.0, you didn't have that capability. So 2.0 opens up to Hadoop to say, if you want to do batch analytics, fantastic. You want to stream data in through Storm, fantastic. You want to do search against the platform. You want to do interactive query and you know, real-time speeds, three, four, five seconds. Absolutely, it's all there. You can do all that in the platform today. And that the right way to do it is create Hadoop to be that enterprise viable platform. But now, on top of it, through Yarn, which is the resource management layer, open it up that you can un unleash the waves of innovation of the rest of the community to go build on top. Mm -hmm. So you're not saying we're gonna do it all, we're saying let's open up innovation, almost like the App Store, and allow that to flourish and everyone else to go build to that common platform. Well, we've been talking, we need more apps. Mm -hmm. you know, we've been waiting and uh, starting to see them come out, you're starting to see commercial off-the-shelf applications, which means that way more companies can get involved in this, right? right. Oh, we're in the early stages of the Hadoop market, right? We're focused on the platform side, but what will happen, it is unleashing waves of innovation yeah. around the other technologies that move around it, applications that could go consume that data, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, the internet guys, the Wall Street guys, they have the resources to build the apps, but the mid-sized companies don't, and that's they're the engine of a lot of the economic growth, so. Mm -hmm. But now think of, uh, again, partnership like Microsoft. Think yeah. of the ISV community that Microsoft yeah, has in terms of them, and they're all building apps now to go leverage that platform to go to market to yeah. that community. Herb, talk about the, um, I mean, you guys are customer centric, talk about how customers migrate to the new platform, and you guys have any tools, I mm -hmm. mean, obviously extensibility is key, and continue mm -hmm. to innovate. What, what, what's the situation with customers? Yep. What do they need to do? It's, it's a great question, because what we see with customers is the typical adoption pattern starts off with some level of a pilot, where they want to try the use case, whether it's for funding reasons, technology reasons, how does it fit in my architecture, they're going to do a pilot. And they may do that pilot with us or with anybody else. 
But at some point, they get through that pot and say, this has real applicability. I can really get value of this. Now I want to go broad. I want to go to something more strategic. I want to build a data lake. I want to go broader. How do I go do that? When companies get serious about it, that's typically when they're coming to us, right? as they've gone through that stage and they want to come to us. And when we have that conversation, we realize we need to make it easy to move from whatever other distribution they're on, right? whether it be an earlier version of Hortonworks to whether it's Cloudera's, MapHours, anyone else's, need to make that seamless and dead simple for them to migrate. So based on all the experience of the tens of migrations that we've done already, we've packaged this up into our migration kit that our customers can use. So you, have a, you have a turnkey migration kit. Turnkey migration. We can go migrate and do the estimation, automated migration, and testing of that platform from another distribution or an early one of ours very seamlessly. Great. Okay, we're getting tight on time. Uh, last question. Congratulations on all the success of the show. Um, being kind of a master uh, operator and also uh, experience in the open source world, mm -hmm. just share with the folks out there your vision of how you see the world evolving over the next year or so. Obviously, things are firming up. The ground is validated around Hadoop. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a market. Mm -hmm. uh, there's demand. Um, things are firming up. So there's some ground that needs to be hardened up a little bit, but the business is growing. Uh, the business overall is growing. Right. What's your take on how things are going to play out? Here's how I would see it playing out. 2013, in many cases, 2013 was the year of the pilot and the commercial enterprises. How do I go pilot this and start to get visibility on what Hadoop can do for me? 2014 is the year that many of those pilots are going to broad production, and they want to go deep and wide. And the adoption cycle of how quickly they grow with Hadoop is amazing, and it's because of the volume of data that they want to be able to track and manage. So I see all of those pilots going to commercial production and going much broader, and then the next tier of companies coming in and starting their pilots in 2014. And what I do think is that will start to unleash that next wave of innovation, as we just talked about, with applications and other things that can take advantage of the core platform specific by vertical, specific by domain expertise, and other things. Multi-vendor, all onto the hardware, cloud uh, enabled, all that stuff. And I'm confident that the partners we have and the others are the right companies to go advance that to the next state and take this market forward. Just one more little final point while mm -hmm. you're here, because it's a great perspective. Talk about the open source dynamic. I mean, you've got OpenStack. Looking back at the history of open source, I'd say we're in our fourth generation, depending on how you talk about it. I mean, I'm in my late 40s, so like I, we've seen the early days, but it's such a, a force, as Dave mentioned, of innovation. Has there been any updates to the modern era of open source maturity? Have you seen some new dynamics, or is it the same game as always? So I, th I think here's the dynamic is, as open source has matured, I think I've come to realize open source, it's not just development. Open source is a development model and a business model. On the one hand, it's how do you do development and capture the thoughts of a community and all the expertise, and can you go out and innovate any individual company? And second, what's the right business model of how you're going to go put that out in the market, lower the barriers of entry, increase the ease of adoption, and make it seamless for everyone to start using it. And now that companies have seen that, I think you'll start to see even more waves of innovation around open and source. And you'll see, you see it standardizing then. You see Absolutely. open stack, you're seeing people competing against essentially one big incumbent. So no one player can outweigh a community. No. That's essentially the same model, right? Same essentially, game. Essentially, if, if community can out innovate an individual company. You've seen that with Hadoop and some of the early yeah. advances in other platforms. Already Hadoop, that's all built within the core today. Great insight, Herb. President of Hortonworks, great to be on theCUBE. Uh, and again, thank you for your support, the community. We appreciate it. We love open source. We're all about open source content. Again, we were here four years ago when <laughs> no one ever heard of Hadoop. Um, we've been to all the Hadoop summits. Thanks to you guys. You guys do a great show, Hadoop summits, coming up. Is it Europe's coming up next So we've morning? got Europe in late March in Amsterdam, and then we've and then got the San Jose in June. Great. Mm -hmm. We'll be there, the Cube. This is the Cube live in New York City for Big Data NYC, covering all the big data business action, Hadoop World across the street, and Strata Conference. We'll be right back after this. A short break. Thank you.